Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Tom's Computer Channel. In this episode we take a look of the great competitor of the Amiga. It's the Atari ST. In this case it's an Atari ST 1040 STF. For this one I made a nice video cable. Um, the video link for that I put down in the description or you can click in this corner. But, for, but first, look this video to the end. If you later uh, see the Atari is working, so we have not that much work um, with electronics, so we clean them up, we clean the um, floppy drive inside, and then I show you how to retrobrite the uh, uh, old plastics. So you can retrobriting old computers so that they look nice and almost new. If you want uh, more from this, see, um, subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the bell icon so you uh, won't miss any new videos. But now, let's get started! We are now on the bench with the Atari ST and this model was produced from 1985 to 1994 and this 1040 STF was produced from 1986 to 1989. It was the uh, cheaper alternative to the Apple Macintosh and IBM compatibles and the direct, direct competitor to the Amiga. And just, it was one of the first computer with um, the graphic desktop but, uh, at Atari this named Jam and the first ST models had a graphic desktop on a floppy disk. Later models like this one has the uh, Jam in an, on an internal storage. So a little bit to the specs. This uh, has an 8 megahertz Motorola 68000 the um, graphics chip called Shifter used uh, shared memory so that means the graphics and uh, the system shares uh, the memories of the system also the RAM the sound chip uh, in here is a Yamaha YM2149 and this model has one megabyte of RAM. This the reason why 1040. The F in this model stands for an internal floppy drive and this Display uh, can show in uh, black and white in high resolution and in uh, lower resolution in color graphics too. And had an internal MIDI interface here. This one, it's a MIDI interface. And that's the reason why this machine was also used from music producers back in the day. And with this uh, graphic desktop where uh, usable graphic tablets, cameras and so on, but uh, this one, this uh, gear was not available. So now we take a look at the on the Atari himself. This one here is uh, very old. 
which is this nice function keys into a big keyboard layout. We have here, I've shown you before, the floppy drive. When you look on the back, we have here the modem connector, printer connector, and hard disk connector, the connection uh, for the floppy drive, and 13 pin DIN monitor connector, the on off switch, the power socket, and the reset button. Yeah, the power socket and the reset button. This one has an um, internal power supply. This one I show you later when we this thing open up. And on this side, I've shown it the MIDI in and MIDI out, and a cartridge port. On the other side, you see it's uh, light gray, it's the original color, compared to this yellow gray. On the upper side, on the underside, we have the joystick and the mouse port, and that's it is uh, not so good position. Yeah. So that's for the short look around and walk around, and now. We uh, connected this uh, machine to a um, TV and make a little test. You see, all connected, the mouse is connected, TV cable from a uh, former episode and the monitor and let's go. No, the floppy drive checks the floppy drive. And the system now is booting. It takes a while. It's not that fast machine compared to today. Here we have a floppy disk. Ah, we see. Low resolution graphics mode. The floppy drive, uh, the floppy disk, is uh, empty but formatted with um, Atari oh. medium size. It's in German. Why well, I um, I am in Germany. And so this is the medium resolution. And I'm in Germany and that's why the graphics is uh, in German. As you see, disk is loading. No zero bytes, zero files. So that's it for the test. The next thing is uh, take a look inside. Clean and retro bright. Here we're back on the bench, and now let's open it up. Turn it upside down, and you have here, 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 normally here, here, and here, and here. Case screws. And these screws are from the flap drive. And, the, and we put them all out.
all its screws are out and to open it up you can you have to lift it there and then take it away so now we put out the keyboard Then we have put out this sheet of metal and you see it's corroded. And from the power supply, the case is also corroded. And here we are. Here we have the power supply and the floppy drive. Now we put the floppy drive out. Then we open the tabs. There are a few tabs on this board. Then we we'll take out the power supply. There's some little screws down here. Have some rusty spots on the upper side. The lower side is good. And here we have the main board. You see, it's a little bit dusty, but all is good. The most of the capacitors are new, so we don't have to change them. Put the main board out of this case. The case a little bit dirty, but mostly it's all uh, good. So let's put the case on the side and we clean them later.
So, put the main board on the side, and now we have to disassemble the keyboard. The keycaps, and the keycaps are very yellow, so we want to make a retro bride with them. So, then we must put it up. If you don't have a reference where the position of the keys are, you should take a picture of that. It's uh, later easier to put the puzzle back. So, and uh, for the keycaps, I use a keycap puller, and it's quite easy. All keycaps are disassembled and now we brush the dirt from the keyboard. Now we take the cloth and the cleaner. Put it on the side, and now we clean the caps and let them a little bit soak in soapy water. So here we are, and now we clean the caps.
The case is clean. This we let dry. And the keycaps we let a little bit soak. See you later. The keys are soaking and now we give them a wipe out. There's some dirt on the keycap that you not can clean up. Put yellow water away. Now rinse, we rinse them in fresh water and now let them dry and then it's time for retro bright. Now I will show you how to retrobite. For this we need clear foil. In this case a cling wrap. Now, I show this on the upper case, the lower case and the keys are working similar. For the next step you need glass. Then we need a brush and cream peroxide. You can buy this on, on Amazon. It's not cheap. And then you uh, put it on the case. And then Use your brush to cover the whole surface with this. Uh. 
And uh, I put a little bit on the foil, twist it over, and wrap it in foil. You see, I need a little bit more. And now we are ready and I do this to the lowercase and the keys. Now the case and the keycaps are prepared and if you have sun outside you can put it in the sun at least a few hours and it's faster than the other method. The other method is you build a box like this with a UV light Inside, cover it into aluminium foil. I use this today. You can put the case in. And the key. I have to do two parts of this. Close this, put it on, put it on, and let them sit for a few hours. And every 90 minutes, 
you go and massage the uh, the cream peroxide over the plastic so it doesn't streaking and now we have to wait so while the case is uh, retro brighting in the sun we clean the PCB it's a little bit dusty so I think it's enough to brush the dust away so now we put it on the side and we open up the disk drive So this drive is a little bit dusty, but not that bad. So now we take a fresh one and a little bit of IPA. Lift it a little bit up. Wipe them very carefully. Let this little bit soak. So, and now the head is clean. And now it's time to reassemble this. First we put the upper cover back. Now we take care of these rusty spots at the top of the of the case from the CPU uh, from the PSU. Now we take a pepper towel under it and some white vinegar.
And now we're done. So if the retro brighting is gone, you can look this if the color is correct. You can uh, wrap it out and rinse them in some water. I'll show it to you at the keys. The case is similar. And if your caps are clean, or the case, then uh, put them on the towel and let them dry. Now we are back on the bench and now it's time to reassemble the keyboard. So, keyboard is reassembled and now put it on the side and we make it white. And the next step is the case. Color came out quite well. It's a little bit streaky, but that is from the old plastic.
all screws are back together and now we make it finalized. So all is connected and now let's make the final test. It works. Done. So that's it for this episode. The uh, Atari looks quite well. The record writing is a little bit streaking, but that can happen by over 30 year old plastics. I hope you learned how to uh, retro write old computers and enjoyed this video. If you have some, some questions, feel free uh, to leave a question in the comments or if you have a comment, put it in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed, put the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so um, you can support the channel and hit the small bell icon so you won't miss a new episode. And that's all. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.